It may sound like a science fiction, but continuous advances in nanotechnology let us envision devices such as nanomachines and nanorobots. These nanomachines can be injected into our bodies for different purposes, such as drug delivery and cancer treatment. Currently, nanomachines have limited functionalities and they can only do simple tasks. However, to treat cancer, they need to communicate and collaborate. In other words, nanomachines need to talk. Unfortunately, we cannot use conventional electromagnetic wave-based technologies, like in mobile phones. However, engineers got inspired by how cells communicate in our own bodies. They employed similar principles and the field of molecular communication has emerged. In this animation, these are the transmitter and the receiver nanomachines. In fact, the transmitter nanomachine has a container full of signaling molecules, where here they are shown with red circles. When the control unit opens the gate, molecules flow out. On the other side, the receiving nanomachine has a detection unit to sense the signaling molecules. For example, in this animation, to communicate the symbol 1, the transmitter opens the gate for a short time and 11 molecules flow out. As you can see, 4 molecules reach the receptor. To signal the symbol 0, the transmitter keeps the gate closed. But still, there are 7 molecules diffusing from the long tail of previous signaling. The receiver samples after a time interval. Here, one molecule still reaches the receptor even though the gate was closed. This is called intersymbol interference. In molecular communication, the data rate is low because of these interferences and the slow nature of diffusion. In order to increase the data rate, we can use a technique called multiple input, multiple output or MIMO. In MIMO, the transmitter has multiple gates to release molecules and the receiver has multiple receptors to count them. The drawback is a crosstalk channel called interlink interference. Here, the expected number of received molecules is related to the input matrix by the channel matrix C, which includes all channel memory taps. The process is a stochastic and the number of received molecules follows the Poisson distribution of the mean. Knowledge of channel matrix is crucial for communication. So how do nanomachines estimate the channel? In fact, the transmitter nanomachine sends an optimally designed training sequence over the channel. The receiver, on the other side, counts the number of molecules and saves them in matrix Y. The receiver also has an exact copy of the training sequence. Then, the objective is to estimate the channel matrix C. Two solutions are proposed in the manuscript. First, maximum likelihood channel estimator, which is optimal but computationally expensive. Second, least squares channel estimator, which is far less complex but yet has a great performance. Then, the receiver uses the estimated channel matrix for equalization and detection. We propose decision feedback equalizer to remove the mean value of interferences and then we pair it with three different filters as detection units. One can choose the best detector according to the desired accuracy and complexity. Finally, we consider a more realistic case where nanomachines are also diffusing in the medium and the channel is varying. In this case, the channel, once estimated at the receiver, outdates pretty fast. The solution to this problem is block type communication. Here, the data is divided into blocks of length B with a training sequence at the beginning. First, the transmitter sends a training sequence and the receiver estimates the channel. Then, the receiver uses the estimated channel to decode the rest of the data. This procedure repeats for each block. If you are interested to learn more and see our results, please take a look at our paper Diffusive MIMO Molecular Communications 
channel estimation, equalization and detection, which is published in IEEE Transaction on Communications.